Namaskara. I'm Dr. Sunita Rana Agarwal and my speciality is ophthalmology, eyes. However, I'm also into genetic engineering or gene therapy. And my practice is at Dr. Agarwal Hospitals, 15 Eagle Street, Shantinagar, Bangalore 25. So, uh, first thing is, let's go with each one point. When we talk about increased pressure in the eye, we're talking about glaucoma. So, the second part is unilateral headache, which will also be associated with the glaucoma. But the minute you go into a next part where you say numbness and tingling and burning, any of these sensations means there is some excitement going on the nervous system. When you talk about nervous system, then we're taking a diagnosis more into an area of an autoimmune disease. What does that mean? Autoimmune disease. That means it's a disease where our immune system is attacking us. So we are the enemy for us. Now in an autoimmune disease, along with this numbness, tingling, um, lots of other things like fatigue, hair loss, skin discoloration, it will also be associated with the eyes. In the eyes, there will be an inflammation and there will be glaucoma. All these things can relate to the headache. When we talk about autoimmune disease, what is the main problem happening out here is that there is an inflammation. This inflammation is happening because our immune system, that means our cells, which should be actually attacking only bacteria and virus, is now attacking us. One of the most common autoimmune disease is called multiple sclerosis. And here, we don't really have any good treatment against autoimmune diseases. However, what we can do is try and get the diagnosis by sending the patient for an MRI or for a, a cerebrospinal fluid tap. The MRI will show certain areas of inflammation which we will relate to as plaques and this can happen on the optic nerve this can happen in the brain in any of these areas and then we will be able to target our medicine more towards those areas however taking a small shift out of this area i would like to try and treat these kind of conditions because it's completely all over the body once you attack the brain you're attacking the whole body of course the eyes and the person can go blind so how do we attack this if we can give back the person his own increased immune system most medicine on a conventional basis will try to treat an autoimmune disease by suppressing the immune system so simple medications like steroids or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, wherever we can cut inflammation. However, in the long run, immune suppressant drugs don't prove efficacy. Whereas, let's try and increase the immune system. Let's make an immune booster process. For doing this, what we do is we take one drop of the patient's blood, make the patient's own stem cells, and healthy fetal DNA and give this back as subcutaneous injections to the patient. Here we've given the patient back his own fetal healthy DNA. This is a molecular based study, a molecular based treatment along with the patient's own stem cells. Here now we have a much wider area of treating the whole condition. One more area that we need to address when we address autoimmune disease is first it has been seen that there is an increase in the statistics of autoimmune diseases. Now how do we treat these things? Usually we find that a person associated with autoimmune disease also has some food allergies. How did the person get it? The food allergies so the person also will be associated with a leaky gut. So there would be something like diarrhea or vomiting, some bouts in and out. 
the patient will also have muscle spasm, joint pains, all of them related to some kind of food poisoning. That means not food poisoning, but a food allergy. Now let's try and treat that food allergy. But to treat the food allergy, we need to first find out where did the food allergy come from. Most often these food allergies come from nuts, like peanuts, almonds, any of these. Second, they can come from grains. That means wheat, rice, millet, any of them, barley. They can come from legumes. There's something in the grains and legumes called lecithins. And how do we find out this and the leaky gut? We need to take a blood analysis and we need to take a stool analysis. The stool analysis, what are we searching for? We're searching for good bacteria. Are the good bacteria there in that gut? If the good bacteria are there, they will prevent this leaky gut. That means the gut is leaking. And that means, for example, if there's some peanut allergy, the peanut should be broken down. To help us break down the peanut, we need these good bacteria. If the good bacteria are missing, huge chains of the peanut, that means this protein, is getting into the bloodstream. This is creating an allergic response. Now, if you go into finding out other reasons, so you start finding out from your diet, then meditation, all of these mechanisms that can help us improve our immune system. One of the most important things to do here would be to have some probiotic in our diet. Our Indian diet is filled with yogurt and curd and this would be a very, very good idea. Fruits are also very important, increasing them in your diet. Diet and exercise should be able to tackle a situation that most medicine is not able to.